Believe it or not, one of my most popular episodes to this day is me setting up React inside of Webflow in less than five minutes. This has been a long time coming where I teach you the basics of React because I have a sneaky suspicion this is going to become more relevant than you think. Now, this is, again, the basics of React, so you can just as well apply this to a React project or a Framer project as well, because we're just going to be covering the fundamentals. It doesn't really matter what the platform is that you're using. These are just things that every single React app will use. So without further ado, let's dive in and begin the first episode of a React Fundamentals series. So this is just episode one of this React in Webflow course. The rest of the course is going to be released over on my Patreon. So if you want to follow along, get a deeper understanding of what's happening to be able to do different things, then go head on over to patreon.com slash 0x5am5, links in the description. But there should be enough in this episode to help you get started. Right, let's get you set up in React in less than 30 seconds. So ultimately, any page that you want to have React on will need this code. If you want it across the website, there's a slightly more convoluted setup. So let's just do it page by page as an example here. So first of all, you're going to want to get this URL. Now, I'll leave a copen to this code down below, but please make sure you follow. That's, not, that's the whole point in doing this is that you learn for yourself. So you're going to want React, of course. You're going to want to want React dot. What this does is, actually, I have no idea what it does, but you're going to need it. And then the other one is Babel, which takes a lot of the code we're writing, such as JSX, such as classes and things like that, and transforms them into JavaScript code because the browser doesn't natively know how to handle React and all these syntactical sugar that we need to write inside of React. So... With those three things needed, we create a script tag. Now, I don't think we need module there, but I've done it anyway. And we need to set type text babble. And what that means is that this can knows where to look or what to transform, um, what code transforms. The first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get an element that we're going to put React into. Now, this could be the whole entire page. Or it could be just one little element, which is what we're going to do here. One little element on the page that is reactable. This could be query selector. This could be get element by ID. A popular convention is get element by ID root or get element by ID app or something like this. I've just done a class name because I ID of root is taken. I don't know how. Maybe we can do app. We could have done app, but there we go. Let's, uh, let's ignore that. But I've given it a class name of react. And uh, because class get elements by class name returns a node list, I just want to get the first one that's on there. And then we go react on, create root, and then we pass in the element that we're going to push react into. Then we're going to render hello world. Okay, save that. I've already published it. You'll see that hello world loads there. You'll see the original code, and this is really important. You'll see the original code there first, and then our hello world gets piped into our page. Now, this is now a reactable component. The thing is, this is a bit of a convoluted um, way of working. Work and you have to publish, you have to do all this, that, and the other. What I'm going to do is use a, a setup of uh, using code, uh, VS Code, and a simple server. And then that way we can just refresh this page and see our updates. We'll do an episode later on in the series to set this up. But I've got an episode on, on how to set up a simple server to load in your JavaScript. But there are a few more steps to get React working. But you might use that as a starting point. So all I'm going to do here is go back into my code, scroll down, delete all of this. And I have a link to my server. We refresh this i think it should be broken that's totally fine so we've got a simple uh we've basically recreated what we've got uh, in webflow let's go through this code uh just to let you know what's going on so of course we're importing react which is the same as you saw in the website we've got react dom again we don't need Babel because that is handled differently in this setup and what we're doing we are creating basically that create route which is that which element do we want to push our React code in? Once again, it could be an empty page or it could be a section on the website. And then we're rendering this, whatever this is. This is a HTML element. It's actually technically JSX, but it looks like HTML. But what this means is, and this is pretty much our first lesson, is that every single, every single React component is just a function. Let's demonstrate that right now and just create a, an app.j s okay and then we're going to export default app 
and we're going to return uh, JSX or HTML for, for you and me. So export a uh, function, what's that out? And then we've got this, so we've got this function that's exported from this file. We're going to import um, app from app. And then instead of this, we're going to do that. React is not defined. Okay, we need to import React here. Import React from React. Let's try that one. Cool. So we just needed to import React from React and then we have access to it. There are ways to like manage that, you know, so you don't have to keep doing this everywhere, but, but we'll kind of muscle through it with right now uh, that we've got a function here that's exported, that's imported here. So the idea of now this is, is that we can leave this as it is. We don't need to keep importing things and really we build out our application from here. So let's try another example. Const um, heading or header rather. Um, equals now we can do functions like this and just return that oh, JSX same thing um, and just to really drive that point home I'm sure you won't need to worry about all of this stuff but let's just go through some of these basics uh, we go export default function Heading, return, and let's go back, get this. We're returning that JSX there. And we can import that, that header. Let's go header from header. And then everything should once again work as we expect it to. So that is React in a nutshell. Components are just functions. And I guess let's show you some props here just to round off this episode. So we want to go, let's say, for example, we want to change the text within here. We want to be able to, uh, let's make this more semantic, heading one. Rename this to heading one. Inside of app, we're going to heading one and change that to heading one. So anytime we use this component, we can use this any number of times all over the website, but we just want to be able to change that text on the inside. We want to pass it something called props, properties. So how do we do that? Well, let's just, let's just name this something really, really simple and set a default of hello world so if nothing gets past it at least display something and we want to take that this is a variable here and we want to put this inside of this jsx so we do curly brackets the variable that we want to pass curly brackets there we we go back to the where we call in or we import that component and we set the text to hello wombats oh. so again we need react How do we quickly explain that? Um, so this isn't actually being set like that. Um, editing Sam here jumping in. Basically, text represents all of the props that are being passed in. And then you need to access the individual ones by going uh, text dot text. The common convention here is to have props as that one value coming into the function. And you go props dot text or props dot id. What you'd normally do is do that so it accepts any number of any number of properties. So this could be um, ID equals one, two, three. And then as you would imagine, we could go um, ID equals props dot ID like this. Let that render. There's the ID pass in. So you can pass in any number of props. Now we break that out and be more specific here and go hello world. And then we go ID equals uh, one. Then we don't need the props. It's de uh, property destructuring. 
So one, two, three. If we remove ID here, it should just be one. So this is a property destructuring, and I recommend doing this from this point onwards. Uh, we need to deconstruct the properties that are being passed in, and then this looks a lot more simple. So that is components in a nutshell inside of React. Let's dig into these components a little bit more and demonstrate a lot more of what we can do inside of these functions. Cool, I hope you enjoyed that. Like I say, this is just a taster of a course that I'm releasing over on my Patreon. Links are in the description. Hope to see you over there.